Welcome to City of Light. There's nothing that's going to keep us from getting together, not even the coronavirus. So I'm so glad you've joined us. I see on the screen names popping up from all around. We're so happy that you're here to join us on this Sunday morning here at City of Light via Facebook. Welcome to each and every one of you. Now, this is a little bit unusual for us to uh, conduct services in this manner. Now, I've been wanting to invite everyone to my home, and I'm glad you're here via Facebook. Welcome to my living room. I hope that you'll feel right at home and just kick back and relax as we enjoy a great experience today. This is a celebration moment. We're celebrating the presence of God alive and real within our hearts and our lives. In spite of all that's going on, well, we just want to celebrate the goodness of God as we do this together. Thank you for joining us today at City of Light. I would like to invite you to join us in that welcoming statement that we offer every Sunday at City of Light. It tells a little bit about who we are, our mission, our message, and what we're trying to accomplish together as a body. Let me share it. If you know it, read it along with us. Welcome to City of Light. This is a place where people of like mind come together recognizing in Christ consciousness that there truly is only one power, ever present and all-knowing. We offer a positive and practical approach to a lifetime of spiritual growth. We know we are all spiritual beings having a physical experience in this world. We celebrate our diversity, welcoming everyone in unity. We know that how we act is the greatest expression of what we believe. So we live out our calling to be a light for the world, a light of love, truth, and understanding that is making a difference. Amen. I'd like to share with you a few announcements, let you know about what's coming up, what's happening at City of Light. First of all, it's our tradition to begin our service with our Do Unto Others offering. So we invite you to go to PayPal following our service to our website. You'll find a PayPal button there and you can make a donation for our Do Unto Others offering. Every Sunday, we begin the service by thinking of others moving from a me perspective to a we perspective. So we invite you to do just the same this Sunday. Go to the uh, website at www.cityoflightatlanta.com and the website you'll find a donate button. You can make a donation there of your tithes and offerings or for the Do Unto Others offering as well. Now we're collecting this month for our kitchen upgrade. We've been very successful with our Facebook GoFundMe program. We have raised over $2,000 that's coming in. We're excited to say that we'd love to begin, even during this lockdown time, inviting uh, contractors to come in as they're able to do so and work on plumbing, making sure that we're getting ready to install a fabulous water heater, uh, large sinks, uh, getting ready for the electrical work for our new ovens. We're looking for all of this to help us uh, be more efficient with the programs that we offer of Compassion. We are feeding the hungry and the homeless every week, even in the light of this coronavirus lockdown. We have permission to continue as an essential service for those in need. So on Wednesday nights, we're gonna be still serving hot meals. Uh, crew is coming together. Uh, we can't allow that to be a large crew of volunteers, but a small group is coming together to serve the meals. The meals will be to go, so no one will be uh, in our building by just simply coming by to receive hot meals for the hungry and the homeless. I want to let you know that we have served already a new record this last week, and we anticipate even more. Uh, we anticipate the numbers growing, not only for the Wednesday night dinner for the hungry and the homeless, but also for our Friday food bank program. So if you can give to support these programs, we greatly appreciate it because there's so many people right now that are looking to us for a helping hand. Why don't you let you know about our classes. The classes uh, currently that are having are being held at our building won't be able to continue in that format. We're looking for new formats. We're gonna be reaching out to you with information on classes for Zoom and how you can join us through the internet. We're looking for all kinds of possibilities that we can be in contact with you and stay connected. That's what's most important. We wanna to continue to offer the same services that we offer when we gather together, even now we're separated now by uh, this pandemic, but we're gonna to continue to get together through the medium of the internet and all kinds of possibilities that are available to us. We're gonna explore them all because there ain't no mountain high enough, no river wide enough, to keep us from getting together and to sharing God's love. Amen. 
So we want to also invite you to register your attendance by clicking on this page while you're viewing. Either to click like, love, or whatever, or just a comment or say, I'm here watching, check in, because this helps us to know how many people we're reaching through our program. We'd love to know that you're with us and most importantly, how you're doing. Because not only am I reaching you to you through this medium, but I wanna reach to you through the power of prayer as well. I want you to know that I'm praying for you. I understand that these are challenging times for all of us and we're all going through this, but we're doing it together. One of the best things that we can do is try to reach out to one another and to share compassion. I invite you this week to call someone. I invite you to maybe send a card, drop something in the mail, offer an email or text message. But let's stay connected. Let's reach out to one another and find out, how are you doing? Do you need anything? Is there some way we can help you? Most of all, let one another know that we are praying for each other and that we can really uh, build this community and the connections we have with another through the power of care and concern for one another. Thank you so much. Now, wherever you are today, I invite you to just center your hearts. I want you to know that you're welcome and that we are joining together in this powerful experience via the internet. But most importantly, we're joining together in the divine presence of God. So would you just take a moment to center your hearts with me? Let's join together in a prayer. Let's begin by taking a deep breath. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in this wonderful calm and peace and awareness and release all tension and stress. And just allow the presence of God to speak to you in this moment. And as I share this prayer, let it be that it is a prayer that you, that resonates within your heart and you join with me in agreement. I know this to be my truth. I know that there is truly only one power and that power is a divine source and a presence of perfect peace that is within me. This is a day of blessing, and this is a moment of awakening. And this is my time to welcome new understanding of God and God's love in me, through me, and for me. So I center my spirit. I welcome the divine presence of God. Uh, my ears are attuned to all that the universe has to share and wants to communicate with me. And so for this, I am so grateful. I release these words now into the presence of all that is good and holy, knowing that what I speak now is unfolding as my truth. And so it is. And so it is. Amen. If you're joining us, we welcome you. If some of you are just catching up with uh, Facebook and finding where we are, I'm so delighted that each and every one of you have joined us through Facebook and through this medium. So welcome to City of Light, and we welcome you to this experience. So glad to see so many of you checking in. Thank you for doing that. We're glad that you're here. Today's scripture lesson comes to us from the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 3, one that you're very familiar with, and it's a favorite of mine, especially at this time. It's a favorite of so many as we begin to think about the wonderful presence of God and our need for that presence to keep us at perfect peace. It shares this, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast, stayed on, stayed on thee, locked in, because they trust in you. Beautiful passage of God's powerful presence. It's always with us when we are locked in steadfast, when we are walking in that continued assurance that the presence of God and its love is there for us. This is a great passage of comfort, and it is one that resonates in my heart. And I just wanted to speak from it today because I want you to know that there's perfect peace for you. Yes, I know many of you are struggling. We're all in wondering what's next, what's going on, what are we going to face, and uh, what, what will the future be like? But perfect peace is ours. It's ours to embrace. A while back, I was shopping at an international farmer's market, and, you know, there's all kinds of interesting foods that you can find there. I'm picking up some unusual-looking fruit, and I wonder, what is this? I couldn't figure out. No one seemed to know the name. No one seemed to know what it is. And someone jokingly said, well, that looks like forbidden fruit. Well, have you eaten some of the forbidden fruit of the world today? 
I'm not talking about unusually shaped uh, fruits um, or things that are out of the norm or something from a tropical country that maybe you're not aware of. I'm talking about the unusual fruit of muddled thoughts and mixed words and a lack of clarity about what God has for us. It's our sort of a confusion that we live in. There's the doubt and fear that overcomes us uh, at to times where we just no longer believe that all things are possible. There's a story of Lot's wife. Remember in the Bible, she and Lot, her husband, were leaving Sodom in a hurry because they had been warned of the upcoming destruction. Her love for the city, her attachment for it was so strong, yet her desire to go forth and be in sanctuary and safety was there too. And as she was leaving, she was warned, don't turn back, don't look back. But instead, what does she do? Rushing out of the city, going with her husband and family, she takes a moment where she looks back and in confusion. It's quite often one of these cases where we too are caught in this moment of going forward, looking back, it's a lack of clarity, a lack of understanding of how to go forward completely and finding ourselves almost in a state of confusion. That's really called forbidden fruit. Let me take you to the story of Adam and Eve that brings greater clarity to what I'm trying to express to you. Found in Genesis chapter 3, we find the story of Adam and Eve. And it is there because it's unfolding for us a beautiful allegory, a story of our lives. It's more than something just to be taken literally. It's a story behind a story that describes who we are, each and every one of us and our true nature. Adam and Eve were told to eat of any fruit in the garden, but not the fruit of good and evil of that tree. They were in this moment where they were lacking this clarity, you might say, because they had been offered a temptation, a serpent coming to them and inviting them to think, you know, you could be like God if you just eat of this fruit. Think of what you could be like. You'd have the knowledge of good and evil. Serpent tries to describe what it's like to be God. And quite often we find ourselves in the places where we, from our humanness, are trying to describe what's it like to be God. But it's only when we experience it fully within our story we understand it and know completely. But the serpent's trying to lead them into this temptation. Now, this is an allegory for our lives. It is a, a wonderful metaphysical tool that has been used. And what is an allegory? But it's a story, a poem, or a picture that has been interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning, typically offering a moral or a lesson. And the Bible uses this method quite frequently. The Apostle Paul writes in Galatians chapter 4, verse 24, These things are an allegory, something with a story behind a story. So let's take a look at this story of Adam and Eve and what this allegory unfolds for us. In a metaphysical understanding, we know that Adam means the body and Eve means the soul or the mind. These are two aspects of humanity and they are actually one. Adam and Eve being one, body and soul. We are body and soul and that is we are consciousness and we are mind. We are this physical being, but we are more than that. We are the soul. We are consciousness. We are the very essence of mind. Now, they were told not to eat of this fruit of the tree, but as we read, Eve eats of the fruit and then she gives it to Adam. Ah, how silly people want to blame Eve, the woman for causing all the problems in the world, and that becomes sort of a sexist statement or thought. And how foolish to blame Eve, because we often don't understand that she actually represents each one and every one of us, our consciousness. That's what she represents in this allegory, that the mind was open to this temptation, that the consciousness was entertaining what the serpent had offered. Could I be like God? Hmm. It's there that the moment comes that Eve hands the apple to Adam and it's really passing on that which is in mind then is manifested within body. The body can experience anything that doesn't first experience in mind. And so we often, we have to think before we do in this mind that we have is moving so fast. Often we find ourselves on autopilot. The body does what the mind will tell it to do. 
So the story illustrates for us that the fruit eaten by Eve was this knowledge, a knowledge held in mind, this cause, and Adam, the effect, not the cause, but the effect. This is the very teaching of as a man thinks, so he is. Eve, embodying that which is consciousness and mind, partakes, entertains of the temptation, and then passes it on to Adam, the body. That which we hold in mind manifests in our body. When the soul eats of this fruit of good and evil, it's the mind then that begins to entertain that fruit, meaning entertaining the fear, the lack, the celebration the separation that overwhelms us. And then that body will experience these moments just like so many are experiencing right now with this pandemic. I'm afraid, I'm scared, I don't know what next. I am uncertain, I don't have clarity. My mind is in confusion and I'm filled with muddled thoughts. I want to think good, but I'm so afraid. I want to think of the positive, but all the negative is around me. And we find ourselves in this state where we, like Adam and Eve, we lose our dominion. That's right, dominion. You see, in the passage of Scripture, God invites them to take dominion, to have dominion, to have authority over all things, to take dominion over all creation, to be in charge of. Here it is that they lose this as they entertain this forbidden fruit, as they partake of it, as the mind embraces it, the body receives it, and they find that they lose their authority. Yet all that was theirs is clouded over as they took of this fruit. You see, they were walking in the garden in perfect peace, a place of serenity, and they gave it all up as they entertained these thoughts, as they welcomed it. Walking in the garden with God was what they were traditionally accustomed to. Walking in the all good. It's a day-to-day journey of not letting there be any other thoughts than that of our highest and best. And that's where Adam and Eve were. That's the Garden of Eden for each and every one of us. That's where we'd like to return to. That place where we're walking every day in the midst of this pandemic. Every day knowing that God's highest and best is unfolding for us. This is the wonderful uh, understanding of this being a metaphor. Certainly there's lots of clues that tell us this. First of all, we think uh, that this is always a message for us about our true nature and that we live in a mental universe, that the mind produces all the phenomena, that that which we're thinking about will manifest in our reality or creating our reality. And our belief is the reality sometimes of fear, and limitation. And when we think that way, it becomes the cause of all of our problems. When we believe this, we see how creative our thoughts are, and we understand this truly is an allegory. It's explaining what's going on right now in our world. People are eating of the forbidden fruit. That's right. Muddled thoughts, uncertainty, conversations that are yes and no, yay and nay, always just in confusion and not experiencing the clarity that God wants to offer them when we walk in that perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Now, when we eat of the tree of good and evil, the scripture says you will suffer or die. It doesn't mean that there's a death, but it means that inside within us, we feel this sort of suffering and death as we allow thoughts of fear and lack and celebration to overtake us, separation to overtake us. And when we do, we just feel so almost as if we are dead inside. And here it is that the fall of man is simply this, taking our mind off God and allowing everything unlike God to come into our thinking. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, is the experience of the Garden of Eden walking in it daily, perfect peace, because we trust in God. Now, evil and good, these are states of consciousness that form the heavens and hells of our very thinking and of our day-to-day journey. Good, evil, good, evil, heaven and hell, the torment that we go through in our journey of our life. Yet we're called to walk each every day in a heavenly experience, 
resting in that perfect peace. When we establish an enduring consciousness of good, what happens is this evil disappears. So I invite you every single day to just begin to say, I am walking in the all good. The presence of God is with me, will never leave me nor forsake me. There is one power and only one power. All else is nothing for the power of God is at work in me, through me, around me, and for me. And in this consciousness, we establish a good that all difficulty, all challenge, everything else begins to fade away. When we're thinking of God, we can't be thinking of difficulty. When we're thinking of difficulty, we can't be thinking of God. Now, the Bible repeats this message over and over, telling us no man can serve two masters. You can't seem to serve masters of positive and negative. You can't serve uh, in this way. It tears us apart. Evil, criticism, fear, sickness, lack. They're the results of eating of this mixed fruit. We think one way, we speak another way. We speak of God's care and then we think of, well, I don't know if this is really true. We allow ourselves to be in the place of spiritual weakness and we are giving up this authority and the dominion. And we allow ourselves to live in fear and feeling naked. That's right, like Adam and Eve. They felt naked. They felt exposed, not having God's covering in their life. We must not think this way. We have a choice, for the fall of man is all about thinking wrongly. Wishy-washy life, faith that wavers, that's what the fall of man is all about. We see it in the story of Peter, called to get out of the boat, to walk on water with Jesus. He gets out of the boat with great faith and enthusiasm, stepping out on the waters and beginning to walk in only when that faith wavers. When he eats of the forbidden fruit, he entertains those negative possibilities and he begins to sink. Saying that God is good all the time and thinking that God's not so good right now is wavering, wishy-washy. We become like Peter and we begin to sink. Our calling is to think rightly at all times and we begin to entertain these thoughts of right thinking, righteousness. Now, like that serpent in the story, things want to creep into our mind. And we may listen to the news, the media, conversations on Facebook. They may be like the little serpents that offer thoughts that want to creep into our minds constantly. Will we survive this pandemic? We may never recover. We're going to lose everything. Our world won't be the same. Oh, thank God it won't be the same. We hope it's changed for better. But that snake is like the subtle, with its subtle movements, wants to strike the victim. And those kind of thoughts of negativity want to strike us. And the only way to overcome evil is to unknow it. That's right. Unknow it. Don't feed it. Don't dwell on it. Sort of spit out the apple. Don't even partake of it. Don't give it any power. Pull the plug and that power goes out. The light goes out. The energy ceases to flow. That's what we do. We unthink. These thoughts of negativity, doubt, fear, and lack. Because when we do, we are like Adam and Eve, and we become naked and afraid. This fear grips us, and what happens is we begin to look around for material things to be our solutions. We're looking for all kinds of things instead of looking to God, who has the answer, who is the infinite possibility of every solution for our life. Yet we want to turn to the material. We look to cover ourselves in our sense of nakedness and fear, we look for leaves to cover our nakedness, material things, instead of coming before God. We need to unthink things. When you unthink a thing, it disappears. The only thought we have to deal with is this present one. What are you thinking right now? We need to unthink it, to release it, to let it go, to heal it. That's what's so important in our lives. We allow that healing of a thought of negativity to just go and work within our life, the healing power of God, that presence to just remove those thoughts of fear, doubt, and question, and to flood our lives with the assurance of positive faith. God is with us, never leaving nor forsaking us. This wonderful God, this divine source of all things is with you right now. It is there with you right where you're seated. And that presence wants to fill you, flood your mind with all good. 
So it is that when we release, we fill our mind with the fruit of good. We let our mind be stayed on God and God's goodness. And we begin to just allow the solutions of God to unfold. For the universe has got this. I'm going to tell you that. The universe has got this. And in this moment, as we simply allow the divine presence of God to unfold in a powerful way, we simply trust perfect peace is ours. Perfect peace. That's right. That's where we can dwell. I invite you to not live in bondage, that bondage that comes from today's thoughts that the world wants to impart on us, and to stop eating of the fruit of good and evil. Stop eating of that forbidden fruit. Stop dividing your thoughts between believing in the good and focusing on the fear. Instead, live in the truth that liberates us at all moments. Luke chapter 12, verse 32 says, Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father, that divine source, has been pleased to give you the kingdom, give you the highest and best, give you the perfect peace, give you a moment of dwelling and living within the heavenly realm in mind and in heart. Our greatest strength at this time is to know with confidence, not wishy-washy, not wavering, not eating of a fruit that's muddled thoughts, but to have confidence that all things are working together for good right now. Even though what is going on in our world around us may seem challenging, all things are working together for good. Something amazing is ready to unfold. I don't think it's unusual that we at City of Light chose a theme for this year, living in expectancy. You may think that's a strange theme in the midst of this pandemic, but we're living in the expectancy of the divine power and presence to unfold something amazing for our lives. In the midst of challenge, we're living in the expectancy that the light of God will shine the brightest in us, through us, around us, and for us. So I invite you to know this to be true, that there is one power and it's an overcoming power. No virus, no pandemic has power over it, but that we can claim right now in God this dominion over this and stop eating of that fruit, the fruit of confusion, fruit of good and evil, wondering which and which to hold in heart, but feed your mind on the goodness of God. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed, stayed, locked. Locked in on God. Amen. Today, we offer you the opportunity to share your tithes and offerings via our website. We're developing other ways for you to give generously because I know you want to support your church. City of Light is in great need of your help during this time. We have uh, shut down our facilities, so we are not receiving the income from the events and workshops. And so many of our collaborative partners are unable to continue their ministries. So with that becomes a shortfall. We're looking to you to help us in a great way. So would you be generous? Help us out to continue this ministry in a dynamic way, to help us meet the bills that are coming in regardless of a pandemic. But we need to be there as we trust and walk together in God to meet those needs. And we know we can so I invite you to go to www.cityoflightatlanta.com. It's our webpage. You'll find a donation button there. Help us out with a generous gift today. We greatly appreciate it. We know that as we give, as we sow, we shall reap. And in this time, it's a time of sowing by looking forward in expectancy to reaping God's best. Thank you for your generous giving. We appreciate it. We're also going to be developing some new ways for you to give through Zelle. And, of course, you can always send a check. Our address is 3125 Presidential Parkway, Atlanta, Georgia, 30340. You can find it on our website if you need that address once again. Mail us a check if you like. Or you can simply give through Zelle again or make a donation through uh, the PayPal program on our website. As we conclude today, it's been our tradition. We would always sing, Let There Be Peace on Earth and let it begin with me. We don't have that musical accompaniment. We don't have the opportunity, but let that song just resound, resound in your heart and life today. Perfect peace, let it begin in me. I'd like to close with this prayer of treatment for you. Would you join with me in prayer? 
As we do, let us just invite this perfect peace that we've been talking about to enfold us, to flow down from heaven on high, to flow through that opening crown chakra, to open from our consciousness, on, to flow through the body, bringing perfect peace and serenity to us for every moment that we're facing in the week ahead. Would you pray with me? This I know to be my truth, a truth that I live by. I know that God is all there is and all that really matters. I know that that divine power and presence is a perfect peace that will never leave me nor forsake me as long as I am open and aligned with it. That it will always be there and it, I will experience it to the highest and fullest levels as I'm centered, united in oneness with it. That which we call God is infinite wisdom, and this infinite wisdom is ours to partake of. We welcome this infinite wisdom unfolding for us direction, as we claim in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into our own understanding, and God will direct our paths. So we trust that God is directing and ordaining our very footsteps in the days and weeks ahead, leading us in the pathway that takes us to green pastures and still waters, as the psalmist writes. We understand that there is no power in anything that we need to fear, so we go freely about our business, knowing that all things are working together for good. We claim this now in this divine comfort, this divine peace, this divine assurance that's ours, and with great gratitude for the peace of God that passes all understanding, we release this now, knowing that our word is going forward and does not return void. The universe is responding now to that which we claim, that which we've spoken in word, and we release it as together we say, and so it is. Thank you so much for joining us. We greatly appreciate you being here with us at City of Light. It's been a delight to share this day with us, and we'll look forward to contending, continuing making connection in the future. We're looking forward to being the people of God that we're called to be, whether it be in body, in presence, together as one, or through social media, because there's nothing that can keep us from this wonderful power and presence of God. Nothing that can hold us back. Let this be our theme song. No mountain high enough. No valley, no river, nothing's keeping us from the love of God and from one another. God bless you. Thank you for being with us at City of Light.